Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to talk about different types of extensive and intensive subsistence and commercial agricultural practices. Plus we're also going to review the bid rent theory, monocropping, and monoculture. As always if you find value in these videos consider subscribing. To start we have to understand the difference between subsistence agriculture and commercial agriculture. Subsistence agriculture is agricultural production that is done with the goal of providing food for a person's family or local community. The the purpose of this agriculture is not to make a profit, it is to produce food for consumption. Commercial agriculture, on the other hand, is about producing food for a profit. Here the goal is not to produce food for the farmer to consume, but to sell for a profit. Subsistence agriculture generally uses less machines, has a smaller farm size, and relies more on human labor. While commercial agriculture, on the other hand, generally has a larger farm size, utilizes more advanced machines to help with the production of food, and uses less human labor. Countries that are more more economically developed, such as core countries, tend to see more commercial agriculture and machines used in the production of food. While countries that are less economically developed and part of the periphery tend to have more of their population working in agriculture and lack the resources for more advanced machinery. Which makes sense if we think back to our Unit 2 concepts, where we learned about the demographic transition model and also the different densities, such as the agricultural density. Two other concepts we can connect back to is intensive and and extensive agricultural practices, which we last talked about in our Unit 5 Topic 1 video. Extensive subsistence agricultural practices traditionally tend to use less capital, less machines, and human labor, but do require more land. An example of extensive subsistence agriculture would be pastoral nomads. Intensive subsistence agricultural practices, on the other hand, tend to use less land, more human labor, and may require more capital, such as intensive subsistence with wet rice farming and terrace farming farming in parts of South Asia. If we look at agricultural practices that generate revenue, we can see extensive commercial agricultural practices, which traditionally use less capital, machines, and human labor, but often do require significant amounts of land, such as cattle ranching, which uses few machines and lots of land, and has a goal of making a profit off the cattle that are raised. Lastly, there is intensive commercial agricultural practices, which use less land, but more capital, machines, and or human labor. For example, dairy farming, which requires a significant amount of work of having the cows being milked at least twice a day and lots of investment to purchase the machines needed for large-scale production. Oftentimes we see agriculture that is intensive located near a market or city, while agriculture that is extensive and needs more land will be located farther away from a city or market. This is partially due to the bid rent theory, which is an important theory that will come up later in this unit when we talk about von Thun. And again, when we go into our unit six and look at urban geography, the bid rent theory looks at the price of land in relation to the city or urban area. As we move further away from the city, we see the price of land go down. However, as we get closer to the city, the price of land goes up. This is all because of scarcity. Cities have less land available due to the higher population density, so the cost of land is more. As we move farther away from the city, the demand for land goes down, which means more land is available, thus decreasing the price of land. So agriculture that needs more land is often located farther away from an urban area. To take advantage of cheaper land prices and maximize profit. This is especially true if transporting the final product is relatively inexpensive. Today we can also see the impact of monocropping and monoculture. Monocropping is when farmers grow the same crop each year. They continue to plant the same species of crop year after year after year. Now monocropping does risk soil depletion due to the lack of crop rotation. However, today we are seeing more farmers use monocropping because of the possible profits they can get. When farmers specialize in a specific crop, they become more efficient at producing that crop, which ultimately results in them making a larger profit. Now, monoculture, on the other hand, is when farmers grow one type of crop at a period of time. However, they may switch the type of crop after they harvest. All right, geographers, now comes the time to practice what we have learned. Remember, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and check out my ultimate review packet for more help with your AP Human Geography studies. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you next time online.